So, Riemann sums is something we went over in another video, um, where you take the rectangles to estimate the area under a curve. So, what we're going to do now is show how the limit of that sum is equal to the definite integral and how to evaluate uh, that sum. So, when you're doing the Riemann sum for a given curve, you estimate with rectangles uh, from in your interval, split it into however many rectangles, multiply their areas, uh, multiply the width and the height to find the area, add up the areas, and you'll get the estimation. Now, if the more rectangle you, rectangles you use, the better your approximation gets. And in fact, the limit as you use towards infinity number of rectangles becomes an exact area, which is equal to the definite integral. So let's think of what we can do uh, to use that in terms of notation. So what we do here is we use the sum operator. So this says add up all of the things that are going to be in front of it here. What we want to do is from i equals 1 to n. So what this means is i is the number of the rectangle. So what i equals 1 is the first rectangle. i equals 2 is the second rectangle, etc. We want to take the limit as n goes to infinity because we want to have the limit as n goes to infinity. We want to have infinity rectangles because we're going to get an exact area that way. And what we need to add up is the area of all the rectangles. So let's think about what that is. The area of the rectangles will be b minus a over n, the width. So remember from our Riemann sum video, b minus a over n is the width of every rectangle times the height of every rectangle, which is f of xi star, where this is the height at any given point in the rectangle. So the last thing that we need to do here in terms of figuring out a specific problem is let's get an expression for f of xi star. This is something you need to just remember, and that xi star is always going to be represented as a plus i times b minus a over n. So let's think about what this means. a is your starting value. Remember, this is from a to b. So a is your starting value. b minus a over n is the width of your rectangles. You're going to multiply that times i and add it to a. That is your xi star that goes in here that you evaluate your at your f, and you can evaluate the rectangles from there. So let's, this is a tough process, and let's look at an example problem. So let's say we had our function was x squared plus 2, and we were going on the interval 0 to 3. So let's use our Riemann sum notation here. So we're going to do the limit, I'm starting over here now, the limit as n goes to infinity, the sum from i equals 1 to n. So our b minus a over n, our b minus a here is 3 because we're going from 0 to 3. So we get 3 over n. <clears throat> our function is x squared plus 2, but we need to, instead of x, we have to put this. Our xi star, we're putting this instead and let's substitute all of our things. Well, a is 0 because we're starting at 0 b minus a over n is 3 over n, we just had that. So if we multiply that times i, 3i over n, that is now our x. So if we do that to our function, we have to take 3i over n squared plus 2. And this is the sum that we have to evaluate to figure out our area. So let's go through and see how we would do this. So you're going to make sure that you need to write out the limit as n goes to infinity in the sum sign every step in your work. So get all the partial credit you can. So 3i over n squared is going to be 9i squared over n squared. And then we're going to distribute in this here. So we're going to get 27i squared over n cubed plus 6 over n. 
So now we need to think about how to evaluate this. Well, you can think of the sum as kind of a function where your variable is the one that it's counting, which is i. So everything except for the i's here is a constant. On the other hand, let me put parentheses around that, if you're taking the sum of two things that are added together, you can just do the sum of each one separately. So what we're going to have here is still with the limit as n goes to infinity, sum i equals 1 to n. We're going to have sum of 27 i squared over n cubed plus the sum of 6 over n, because we can split it up like that. And now, like I said, if i is your variable in the sum, everything that's not an i can come in front of the sum. So we're going to have the 27 and the n cubed are going to come in front of our sum. So we have 27 over n cubed, sum from i equals 1 to n of just i squared. That's all we would have left here. And in this case, the 6 and the n come out, and we'd just be left with 1. Sum from i equals 1 to n, we put 6 over n in front, and we just have the sum of 1. So, we're ready to now substitute in n for what these sums are. Now, on your tests, your teachers are going to give you the sum of i, the sum of i squared, the sum of i cubed. Those are not things you're going to need to memorize. But the sum of 1, for example, that's something that should be pretty uh, easy to remember. So what this is saying is you're adding 1 to itself n times. So if you do 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 up to n times, that would just be n. So this whole thing right here can be 6 over n just times n. This one over here... The sum, so what this says is you add, you're you adding up all of the squares. So we have 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 4 squared plus 5 squared. So in this case, we didn't increase the number because we were just adding 1 to itself. What this means is you're adding the next number to itself, and in this case, it's squared also. So we'll add all the perfect squares added together. In terms of i, there's a formula for that actually. And it's going to be n, n plus 1, 2n plus 1, all over 6. So like I said, that's not something that you're going to need to remember. It's always going to be provided for you on the test. But you just need to know that once you get to this point, that's when you can substitute in that formula you're given. So finally, we have, let's see what we have here. We have 27, n, n plus 1, 2n plus 1 over 6n cubed. Over here, 6n over n just gave us plus 6. And we're doing the limit as n goes to infinity. So last thing we need to determine is just what's the limit as n goes to infinity of all of this. Well, instead of actually distributing this out and doing that entire polynomial, what's easier to do is, if remember that if you have a limit, an infinite limit, all you need to do if you have a rational function is look at the degree of the top and the bottom. Well, the bottom is degree 3, has a coefficient of 6. The top, if you were to distribute all of this out, it would be a degree 3 because you have an n, n plus 1, and a 2n plus 1. All you need to figure out is what would the coefficient be. Well, n times n times 2n would have been 2n cubed, and that would have been the first term in all of it, times 27. So really, this is like 54n cubed plus a bunch of other stuff <clears throat> over 6n cubed plus 6. Now we can see we have the same degree. So the infinite limit, same degree, you just use the ratio of the coefficient. So we get 54 over 6 plus our 6. Now, oh, sorry, I need to write the limit sign here. Now, in taking the limit, we just get this, so you don't have to write anymore. And 54 over 6 is 9, so we get 9 plus 6 equals 15. Now, of course, you can always check your work here by doing the definite integral. If you do the definite integral of this from 0 to 3, x squared plus 2, you should get 15. 
and you do. And of course, doing the definite integral is a lot easier and a lot faster. However, you're pretty much always going to have a free response problem on your exam where you have to do it out the sum way, the long way, and do the limit of Riemann sums. So remember, use the substitution for x. Let me rewrite that real quick. That x is always a plus i times b minus a over n. That is always the case. And plug that into your function times b minus a over n because that's your rectangle width and height. So you always use the width over n times the function evaluated at this x. Multiply it all out, get it as simple as possible. Everything that doesn't have an i in it can come in front of your sums. When you get to the point where you just are left with the i's, that's when you use the substitutions that are going to be provided for you, sum of i, sum of i squared, sum of i cubed. And finally, do the infinite limit. It should always work out that you have same degree things, so you're going to use the coefficients, because you always have to end up with a number on a definite integral. Remember, you can't get infinity or anything like that, so this should always work out this way. But this is how you do these limits of uh, Riemann sums. <clears> Thank <throat> you.